Today we have an exciting episode. We are joined by our founder, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hey. And we're joined by our friends from Replicate, Zeke and Rina. Hi, guys. Hey. And since we have Alicia here, tell us about Rosebud. Yeah. Well, Rosebud is where you go to Vibe Code Games. There you can directly prompt the game you want to make. In my case, I actually used one of the default prompts, Cartoon Forest Game. And this is create a simple, cute, cartoon voxel forest. Every time you generate this, it will be a new game. Here, cute voxel game. Once you're happy with it, say I am now, you could just publish one click you can open it in a new tab and then you can also have other people remix your game which is effectively forking it and that's it replicate can empower your game development by providing thousands of ai models that can do anything you pretty much want any assets music and much more z can you give a brief explanation of what is replicate and how people who are building games can use it yeah you gave a pretty good intro there basically replicate is a platform for running open source models you can use models that you publish yourself or models that other people have published it's really easy easy to get started. You can run models in the browser, but you can also run them with a cloud hosted API. So if you are able to write a little bit of code to run in your backend or in your game application, it's really easy to run models that can generate images, sprites, you can generate music, all sorts of interesting things. I just jumped into Rosebud AI and asked it to make a clone of the Google Chrome dinosaur jumping in the desert side scroller. And it got off to a really good start. So it explained uh, the, the sort of rationale behind how that would work. And it wrote some code and all of a sudden I had a working game. And then I, I just had to make a few edits as I went along the way, like make me jump higher, make more things scroll across the screen, still again, just using natural language prompts um, to improve the game. And then I wanted to show you how I added this little like dog character to the game. I went searching on Replicate for a model that could generate a sprite map for me. I think I just searched for sprites or sprite map and I came across this model, just a fine tuned version of the Flux uh, image generation model that specifically fine tuned to create these sprite maps. So all you have to do is write a text prompt, make sure you use the word sprites somewhere in the prompt and it'll generate an image like this for you. I went off the rails a little bit and thought, okay, I'm gonna take this existing sprite map and I applied this Van Gogh style to the image. And what came out were these cute little Van Gogh looking characters on a sprite map. And you'll notice that in this image, there's still a background on there. So we'd want to use a background remover model. That's a perfect use case for Replicate. And then I went into the Rosebud and I uploaded this little PNG image of my sprite map. And Rosebud was smart enough to inject the image into my prompt. And the next thing I knew, my little cute dog character is actually the character in the game. I didn't actually have to write any code to do this. Literally just open a few browser tabs, type a few prompts and do a little bit of vibe coding. and. Now I'm a game developer. That's awesome. So I did something with like two prompts. So I said, create a simple, cute cartoon style voxel for us and it generated this for me and actually added one more thing, which is to make some animated elements. Looks like there's fluttering leaves. So this is looking pretty cute, but lacks some music. So I'm going to switch over to the music gen model and replicate. I want to create some cute, cozy vibe music for a game. This might not be the best prompt, but let's just try it. And then remember my game, basically I downloaded that asset from Replicate and then I uploaded into Rosebud and I said, you know, insert, which allowed me to just add this music asset. And then I added a button to mute, unmute it, but here it is in the game. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I think I just get totally survived. I mean, my NPC's floating in the air right now, so I'll fix that. Actually, something I also wanted to share with you guys is obviously Flux is on Replicate, so I was thinking we could show off the image prompting feature. So this is something I just, you know, said cute 3D forest cozy vibe game. So let's just download this image and then we can add that. You can see the image thumbnail here and be like, style my game like this image. And then we'll see where that goes. So that was the image I generated on Replicate. And so you can use image references to kind of give it different vibes. Okay, I will definitely help transform the visual style of your game to match the lovely, soft, stylized look. It's a really charming aesthetic. Oh, interesting. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's very like, cool. Yeah, yeah, and then there's a screenshot feature too. So it'd be like, make the trees bigger, like in the reference. And I was also trying to do something with replicate on here, just like a person to make the NPCs look more like this reference image I just generated on replicate. Okay, the people look less blocky, but I would say people still look pretty simple. <laughs> How does Rosebud decide what 
tooling or libraries to use under the hood when generating the game. We change the system prompt kind of a lot, but what we've noticed is that 3JS is just better at, and so we'll try to just force it to use that framework, but then there's still quite a bit aside from just choosing 3JS as well. If you're a Rosebud user, is there a benefit to sort of learning the basics of a tool like 3JS to be able to better communicate with the AI model? Will it be better if you know what you're doing? Absolutely. Um, but you can get away with not having <laughs> that knowledge and still getting pretty far. Yeah, that's great. Oh, one thing to show up, I did not like this change. So we can just go, it auto saves, so I can just confirm and then and, you know, I can go back and basically edit stuff. I know, Jason, you were uh, also working on something. So, something similar to what Alicia did. I used the music gen model, asking for Animal Crossing style, quirky xylophone stuff. I pretty much that used... Great. It's so cute. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is actually good. Like, I would use this. Then I have like a volume slider here, mute button, and also I asked for now playing. So if you have cool names for your songs, people can know. Right now, it's just called song one and two, though. So that's what it's showing up here. Nice. I'm such a great music. I know that when I added an image asset, it did this clever thing of injecting the asset into the context for the chat. But if I'm like, I'm working on a project in Rosebit and then I leave it, come back the next day, how do I refer to an existing asset in the library when resuming my conversation? If you go to the asset tab, there's a toggle, right? There's like in current project and non current project. And so that actually helps you organize and, and refer to things. Everything you have in your current project, if they all uni have unique names, then Rosie will be able to differentiate. It's just the ones that have the same name where you have to be a little bit more specific. That's how you can use Replicate and thousands of different AI models. I'm sure you can find some hidden gems to generate sprites and music and uh, anything else you need. Thank you so much, Zeke, for joining and Leisha. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah.